Welcome back to The Painting Coach. Now in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, a few weeks ago, I reached out to some companies who supply 3D printers and Elegoo were very kind enough to send me their Mars Pro 2 or Mars 2 Pro. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of an unboxing. We're gonna do uh, have a look what's in the box and then we're gonna set it all up. We're gonna run some 3D prints. As a disclaimer, this is the first time I've ever seen a 3D printer in the flesh. This is the first time I've ever attempted anything like this. I've watched some videos on YouTube, um, but this is an absolute new one for me. So let's open the box. Okay, so in terms of what we've got in the box, we've got user manual, very important. And I will uh, be going through this in quite a bit of detail. We've got some what looks like replacement FEP films. So uh, I think these are the bits that the, the resin sits on top of and it goes, de um, goes down into and sort of the UV light comes through it. Uh, again, like I said, might be talking absolute rubbish. I have no idea. Uh, it is the Mars 2 Pro. So let's see what else is in here. So we've got this box, which is my toolkit box. So let's see what's in the toolkit. It's the UK version because uh, we're in the UK. All right. So, wow, let's have a look. So we've got a... A spatula which I'm assuming is to get the the models off the the build plate we've got some uh, allen keys and screws which I imagine are to secure the build plate and make sure that it's it's level in the right place some nitrile gloves and a measuring beaker so very important to wear the gloves because the resin is toxic you do not want to get that on your skin got a plug UK three plug three prong plug power adapter ah so we've got a plastic scraper as well so maybe this is for the build plate i'm not sure i'm sure it'll say in uh, in the instructions got some tools what's that precision find hand tools let's have a look oh it's a pair of snippers so i'm guessing that might be for removing um things like support lines so that uh, they come off nice and smooth there's a USB pen drive, which if you're not sure how 3D printers work, you essentially you take the file off your computer, put it on your pen drive. You plug the pen drive into the Mars. You can probably see the USB port just there. Uh, and then you just, uh, it'll print from the pen drive. So you don't need to be connected to a network or anything. What's here? So these look like, they look a bit like coffee filters. I think these could be for uh, straining uh, the excess resin back into uh, into the resin pot itself. I'm not sure what this is. It could be part of the build plate mechanism. I'm not 100%. Like I said, we'll go through the manual and we'll have a look at everything. We've got some masks, which are really important, not just because of the current uh, circumstances around the world, uh, but because, like I said, some of the, the resin does smell a little bit and you don't really want to be inhaling it. So I may use my airbrush and respirator. I haven't decided yet. And then last but not least in the toolbox, uh, we've got a rubber, it's like a rubber gasket, a rubber seal. That, oh, there we are. So I, I, I haven't watched videos online. What we, I think this goes around the bottom of the of the cover and that then stops um, stops anything kind of getting out, any vapours, etc. So that's the toolkit we've got with it. So I'm going to put all this away now. And I'll pull the printer out off cam because, as you can see, there's not too much space on my work desk. And then we'll have a look at the printer itself. So here's what comes uh, in the printer uh, assembly itself. So you've got the printer, LCD screen there with the USB drive on there. The power point is around the back. You've got the build plate. So this uh, connects onto the printer there. And this is what goes into the, the resin vat that you've got here. And inside there is uh, an LCD screen that shoots UV light up and that's what causes the resin to go off, to go hard. So one of the first thing we do is we level this uh, and of course this is the, the box where everything lives in. So this just sits on, on top there. This resin vat comes off. So you can just fill it in. I remember those, uh, those FP screens that we had, um, they go, I think they go on the bottom there. There's, I'll find out, but there's some bits to to take off as well uh, just to get it all ready um, so it seems fairly straightforward I'm gonna have a quick flick through of the instruction manual first uh, and then when I come back I think we'll we'll get it set up and uh, 
hopefully ready to run its first test print. Okay, so we fired her up for the first time. So what we need to do is calibrate the build plate which I've attached. And you can see that moves around a little bit. So what we need to do is calibrate that to the machine. Now the machine itself doesn't have to be level, but obviously if it's not, when you've got resin in the vat, it could get a little bit messy. So you want to keep this as level as you can. And then we're going to level that using the machine. So what you need to do is take a sheet of A4 paper. Now, A4 doesn't actually fit in there, but it's just the thickness that you want. So I'm just going to pop that there. And then what you want to do is on the screen, you should see the tools button. So you set Z to zero. And it'll ask you to home first and manually adjust. So confirm, manual, and press home. So you can see it's just lowering down now. So I'll wait for that to lower down to where it needs to go. And as it hits the printer, it'll get to that level state. And then what I need to do is tighten up those bolts. And what I should be able to do is pull that paper out, but not push it back in. So if I can push the paper back in, it means that there's too much of a gap. But I should still be able to pull it out. So it's just doing its final adjustments, which it looks like it's done. So I'll just go and tighten those bolts. Remember, in general, it's uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So to the right to tight, to the left to loosen it. And now the test. So remember, this should come out, but I shouldn't be able to push it back in. So it's coming out okay. And I can't push it back in. So that is level and ready to go. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go in and do some printing. So my voice is probably quite distorted because I'm using my uh, rib breather that I use for airbrushing. So the first thing we need to do, we've got the USB plugged in. Just need to fill the vat with some resin. So Elegoo very kindly sent me some of their uh, water washable resin. As you can see from the colour, this is yellow. So I just want to move this around so you can see the screen. What we're going to do is we're going to do our first test print. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is just pop the cover on. Move my light out the way. So we're pretty much ready to go. So what we want to do, I take my mask off now. So click print, and we've got Rook CTB. So we're going to press that. That's what we're printing. So you've probably seen these around. So we're going to press play, and the build the plate is working its way down now as that build plate works its way down it's going to take a while to get it because I put it right up to the top to make sure I have plenty of room to put the resin in so it's going to come down I'll just read what the screen says so this is going to take uh, a minute per layer so I guess once it gets started it'll tell us how long it's going to take altogether when it tells us that, we'll come back and have a look. So the build plate is now into uh, the resin and you can see those two circles are the layers uh, that it's printing next. And if you can't quite see it, it says that the whole thing is going to take about two hours and seven minutes to print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the camera on recording this. I'm going to then do a little bit of a time lapse and we'll come back at the end and see what's happening while this time lapse is going on I, I really think i should take some time to just say how easy and straightforward all of this has been so far so still waiting for that first print to come out now you hear stories about print failures and, and things like that and, and i've got to be honest i've just followed the instructions yes i know i'm only printing the test print here but so far so good in terms of ease of use um, i don't know what other printers are like this is the only 3d printer i've ever touched in the flesh the only 3d printer I've ever used but so far I'm really happy with how uh, how easy it is to use and how quick things are going um, I will re-emphasize again 
safety first guys safety first and then safety first because it's really important we stay safe the fumes from the resin can be uh, quite noxious uh, so it's important you wear your gloves wear a mask uh, you'll see in the next segment that i take the top off the printer and leave the resin in the vat don't do that leave the top on the printer make sure you've got your windows open uh, and clear that vat out as soon as you can with gloves and a mask Okay, so that test print is done. It took uh, about two and a half hours. It was a lot longer than I thought it was, but it's done. Uh, and you can probably see there that it looks like it's been successful. So, as this is the water washable resin, I've got my two pots of water there in pickle jars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bill plate off, and the next shot you'll see is me, hopefully, getting them off the bill plate and into those pickle jars. Okay, so the print seems pretty good. Now, I am really struggling to get these off the build plate. So, I've sprayed the model with some IPA to see if that helps. But maybe I just need a firm surface to push down on. Okay, that was an absolute mission to get those off the build plate. There was a lot of section on there holding them down and you can see they're just quite damaged. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop them into this little pickle shaker, pickle jar I should say, uh, which has got a convenient handle. So I can just push them in and out like that. Now one thing to notice, I'm using a different hand to do this to the one that I used to put the resin in. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to contaminate the pickle jar, the pot, with this hand. And if you see it's quite wet there, it's got resin on it. So I'm just going to give it a little feel there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them to this one, which is a cleaner pot. And then I'm going to do the same again. Swap my hands to make sure I'm not contaminating. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to take them out. I'm going to let them dry. So just remember, always wear your gloves because until they're cured under a UV light, they're still potentially harmful. Okay, so I'm going to let those dry off. We'll pop them under the UV light next and then uh, I'll see you back here. So here's the UV light. It's just a nail lamp. Um, picked this up really cheap off Amazon. It's mirrored all inside. You can pull out that as well, which makes it easy to put the different bits on. So I'm going to put them on flat like that so that there's room for them in there. Oops. Make sure they're not touching. Well, I'm not sure if that has too much of a difference. Pop that back in. And I'm going to leave them there for about 15 minutes to cure. Come back and uh, see how we're done. All right, so here we go. This is what we've got, the cured resin, and it looks pretty good. Uh, this one I've just used some uh, of the Vallejo polyurethane resin. That's this bad boy, which I normally use through an airbrush. I've just brushed it on here quite thickly. It seems to have taken fine. Uh, no major issues to report on that front. It uh, looks good. Um, you can see the, the plain one here as well. A little bit of damage on the bottom. Um, so I'm keen to see if, if this is going to be something that you get with all uh, the, the prints I, I do or whether it's something because of how much surface area and how much suction there is as, as the model's printing. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. It's an exciting start to the adventure. Uh, next time, because uh, there will be a next time, we'll be having a look at something a little bit more detailed. So I've got some drop troops here from uh, Anvil Industries, which... They print up pretty nice. I think the head's a little bit big in terms of scale, but but it's pretty cool. So if you want to count as Elysian drop troops, perhaps. And the next thing we'll do as well, we'll start looking at. You may see on my Instagram the uh, seventy-five millimeter miniatures from uh, Loot Studio. These are absolutely fantastic. I'm in love with them. 
Uh, I'm going to print them all off at 75 mil to make a nice bar scene because uh, these these are really really fantastic. I absolutely love them. They do also come in the 28 mil, 32 mil size as well. As you can see, they're <laughs> much smaller, so probably much less detail. Uh, which I'll need to, to put on there and prime it. So that's me done for the first of these videos. I really hope you've enjoyed uh, watching. I really hope you've enjoyed finding out a little bit about 3D printing. If you liked the video, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me uh, and help the channel. If you'd like to buy your own 3D printer and get started, then there are links in the description for the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro uh, over on Amazon there. Uh, and any purchases you make through those links, they do help support the channel with a small affiliate payment. It doesn't actually cost you uh, anything additional so thanks again for watching i'll see you next time